I get asked a lot of questions about gauge substitution and yarn substitution, so in today's video I'm going to show you how to take this very simple knit in the round cowl and go from a sport weight yarn to a worsted weight yarn. This is featuring one skein of Be So Sporty, my sport weight yarn, and I'm going to show you how to replicate it in one skein of Be So Bold, my worsted weight yarn. What I've done is started with a gauge swatch, and I have 16 stitches on my needles here, but what's different is that it's going to be a stockinette base stitch in the round like this one, but obviously worked on a different size needle, and I'm going to have to measure my gauge to see how many stitches I'm going to need to replicate the 20 inches circumference for the cowl. So of these 16 stitches, I have about four inches. So we now have four stitches to the inch instead of the five stitches to the inch that we had in this pattern. So what I want to do is adjust my uh, cast on stitches accordingly. So four stitches to the inch instead of five stitches to the inch to create um, the 20 inch circumference we're going to go from a hundred stitches to now doing 80 stitches for a cast on. So let me show you how we do that. I'm using long tail cast on, which means I'm going to start, I'm going to pull the yarn, I've got a little more than, a little more than 40 inches here, um, probably more than I need, but I absolutely can't stand running out of yarn during a long tail cast on, so I always go a little extra. I'm going to start with a slip knit, a slip knot, which means we're going to wrap the yarn around our fingers, stick your, of your left hand, stick your fingers of your right hand through that circle and pull the loop through. You're going to cinch it to tighten onto your working needle. You're going to hold your tail yarn in front with your thumb and you're going to hold and your fingers like that and then you're going to hold your working yarn in between your third and fourth finger with your second finger moving at them. So you're going to wrap the yarn around your thumb, insert your needle, into the loop on your thumb, pull the working yarn through that loop, slide it off, cinch it with the tail yarn, and put it on your right hand needle. And I'm going to do that several times really slowly so you can follow along. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it and the more consistent your tension will get. So we're going to go ahead and continue on casting on 80 stitches. Once you have your 80 stitches cast on, I'll show you how to join in the round. Alright, we've got all our stitches cast on and so now we want to slide our stitches around the needle making sure that they're all facing in the same direction. So that when we join them, we have, we're working in all the same sides. So you want to make sure that that ridge is facing inward on all of them and that way your stitches aren't twisted. If for some reason they did get twisted, you'd end up making a twisted Mobius and not a cowl. So it's really important to check to make sure your stitches aren't twisted. Okay, so we're going to start with our first stitch here. In fact, here's an, another little tip that I really like, and that is to move your last cast on stitch to the left hand needle and then knit those two stitches together through the front and back loop. And that's how you join them together instead of having a gap between the stitches. So that counts as your first two stitches now. And then we've got three Four. We're just going to knit all the way around on this first row. Okay, I'm almost to the end of my round here, and what I'm noticing is that I still have a bit of a gap between the first and last stitches of the round. So what I'm going to do is repeat what I did at the beginning of this round, and that's going to be to knit the first and last stitch together through the front and back loop 
which is joining them together but also not affecting our stitch count. So we're going to start with that and now for the second round we're going to purl around which means we pull, pull the yarn to the front of our work, insert our needle from the front right to left, yarn over the needle and pull through. So we're going to work a purl in each stitch around because garter stitch in the round is worked one row, one round knitting, one round purling, which is opposite of what garter stitch is worked, working flat, then it is knitting every row. So when we go to our stockinette, stockinette based lace pattern, we'll end up knitting ever, just knitting every row. So go ahead and purl around this round and then we'll get started on the lace. All right, we finished our purl round and now we're going to move the yarn to the back of our work again. Our stitch pattern is a very simple lace in the respect that it is a four round repeat and four stitch repeat. I'm going to show you the first round of the repeat now. It's yarn over your needle, so move the yarn to the front, knit two together. It's yarn over, knit two together, knit two. Those are the four stitches, so we're going to repeat that around. Yarn over, knit two together, knit two. Yarn over, knit two together, knit two. Yarn over, knit two together, knit two. So you want to repeat that all the way around, and then I'll show you what round two looks like. If you want to see the pattern line by line, you just need to go and read it on my website. The link will show on the screen now. Okay, we finished our repeat, our round one of the stitch pattern. So now the second round is to just knit in every stitch around. And what that means is you're going to knit into every yarn over and stitch around. So starting with stitch one, which is a yarn over from the first round, we're going to knit into the yarn over and then knit into the next three stitches. But this will be um, spelled out in the pattern as just knit around. But just so you can recognize what you're doing, you're knitting into all of the yarn overs and stitches because the yarn over counts as a stitch. So you just want to knit every stitch around and when you finish that I'll show you how to work the next lace round. Okay, our next round in the pattern is knit two then yarn over, knit two together. Knit two, yarn over, knit two together. Which is a slight variation from what we did on the first lace round, lace round which was late, round one. We did yarn over, knit two together, knit two. Well now we're doing that in the reverse order. We're doing knit two, yarn over, knit two together. So just repeat that across the round and I'll show you what to do next. Now we've finished round three of the pattern. Round four is the same as round two, which is to just knit across or knit around, which means we're going to knit all the stitches and the yarn overs. And that's the pattern. So now we have established what our, four, what our four rounds of pattern are. Round one is yarn over, knit two together, knit two, and repeat that around. Round two is to knit around. Round three is to knit two, yarn over, knit two together, and repeat that around. And round four is to just knit around. So what I'd like you to do now is a little homework with me, and what that is is we're going to repeat rounds one, two, three and four until we're either at close to the height that we want our cowl to be or close to being out of yarn. At that point I'll show you how we do our garter edge, garter stitch edge, and how we do my favorite very loose 
uh, bind off. Hopefully your cowl looks just like mine now. We've got about 10 inches of lace and then I reverted back to our original pattern of garter stitch in the round which is alternating a round of knit with a round of purl and I've done that for four repeats, so four garter ridges and I'm just finishing up my last couple of stitches of purl in the last round. I'm going to remove the stitch marker at the end of the round and begin that super stretchy bind off technique I told you I was going to show you. It's my absolute favorite way to bind off when you want a really uh, stretchy edge. Anytime you do the lower edge of a cowl, the lower edge of a shawl, the lower edge of any type of a lace work, it's really, really wonderful. wonderful. And, here's, and here's how you do it. It's really simple. You're going to knit one, yarn over, and knit the next stitch. Now, you're going to take that first stitch you knit and the yarn over, pick them up with your left hand needle and pull them up and over that second stitch you knit. So we're adding a yarn over between our stitches as we bind them off. So now we'll repeat that. Yarn over, knit the next stitch. Now we're going to pick up that yarn over and the first stitch and pull them up and over the second stitch and off the needle. Did you see how I kind of flubbed there and I couldn't get them both at the same time? If you have to pull them over one at a time instead of at the same time, that's perfectly fine also. There is no wrong way to do it in that respect. So we did a yarn over, knit one, and then we're going to pick up and pull off the yarn over and the first stitch over the second stitch. And you just want to repeat this all the way around. All right, we're down to our last couple of stitches here, so we're just going to finish off with yarn over, knit one, pass the yarn over and stitch, first stitch up and over the second, and one last time. Now what I like to do to finish this off before fastening off is I pick up and knit the first stitch at the beginning of the round and then pass it over the second stitch. It kind of just evens up our last round of bind off. We're going to snip the yarn and fasten it off. You'll use a yarn needle now to weave in your ends. And so now what we've done is taken a pattern for a sport weight yarn in a size 5 set of knitting needles, which is 3.75 millimeter, and we converted it with a little bit of math to a worsted weight yarn in a size 8 or 5 millimeter set of knitting needles. And you can see they each use one skein of yarn, and they're both pretty, but depending on which size needle you're more comfortable with and what size yarn you're more comfortable working with, you can make one or the other. Both patterns are available on my website, but I also would like to hear from you about how you've learned how to convert patterns to do this on your own now. Talk to you soon.